Air Chief Marshal N.A.K. Brown is in rescue hub Gorchar a day after the tragic accident in the area where a chopper crashed near Kedarnath, taking down 20 people, all relief and rescue personnel belonging to the Air Force, NDRF and ITBP. The Air Chief rushed to the area to boost the morale of his pilots who are operating in difficult weather conditions for over a week now to rescue thousands of people who were stranded in the hills. During night-long search operations, Garut commandos recovered four more bodies. The IF sources say that uh, that this morning, 12 bodies in all have been found from the site of yesterday's crash of the Air Force chopper. Around 5,000 people are still stranded in army camps and rescue operations have been carrying on this morning. Over the last few days, the weather in the hills has turned again with heavy rainfall. First arriving in Dehradun, the Air Chief reiterated his message that the rescue operations will go on. And NETV's Barkha spoke to the Air Chief there as he arrived in Gauchar. Sir, what is the update that you can give us? Have all the bodies at this moment been recovered? Yeah. Actually, what I can tell you at this point of time, that uh, this accident took place uh, last afternoon, yesterday afternoon, around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we managed to, by evening, uh, slither down. Uh, okay, sir, if you can just come this way and we'll start again. Sir, if we can... Please now let's calm down and let him speak, please. I'll, I'll have all the time. So Sir, if you can tell us if the bodies have been recovered. Yeah. As I said, this accident took place yesterday afternoon, around 2 o'clock, uh, close to Gorikon, while this chopper was returning from uh, Katrinath. And uh, there were actually three helicopters. One was in the lead by about 10 minutes ahead, and there was one which was following about 10 minutes behind. So it's not that he was operating alone in that area, he was actually together, uh, three aircraft. And uh, when this happened, we sent a team uh, sometime in the evening to slither down certain Garut forces, commandos, seven of them. And they have reported to us that there are no uh, survivors in this uh, group. There were 20 people on board, uh, five from the Air Force, which part of the crew. There were nine from the NDRF and uh, six from the ITBP, totaling a total of 20. Sir, uh, there is such a thing as taking too many risks. Is there any sense that you will now review the number of risks heroically that your forces have been taking uh, to save lives? Is there a sense that the envelope of safety was pushed? Well, uh, I, I wouldn't say that anything was pushed. Uh, uh, what we have to remember is that... So maybe if we can just wait for this. Just wait for it because we won't be able to hear it. Sir, so just first the question on on whether safety. Uh, how far are you going to push the envelope of safety? When is taking a risk taking too much of a risk? Well, uh, uh, all that I would say is that uh, in the mountains, especially during the monsoon weather, weather is always an issue. But at this point of time, we are not quite sure whether it was the weather or was there any technical problem. Fortunately, uh, we have recovered the cockpit voice recorder. We have recovered the flight data recorder. And I think in a few days' time, we'll get to know absolutely as to what exactly has happened. So I think it will be a little premature for me to comment on, on, on that part. Whether it's something, like I said, in the monsoons you have to deal with, it's not going to go away. Fortunately, we are going to get some windows uh, as we have today, and maybe in the next couple of days uh, as the weather continues to improve. But when you're talking about the uh, pushing the envelope, uh, you know, when you're doing, when you're doing uh, rescue missions, when you have to pick up survivors, please remember the operational risk factor uh, is is always considered very very closely so, but uh, as compared to the to the mission that you have to accomplish and it's, it's reviewed almost on a daily mission basis it is not on a standalone basis so uh, our crews are absolutely highly qualified uh, they're very capable of doing this in fact there are a number of times they have returned because they could not get through because of weather so we leave the decision to them they're highly trained and motivated uh, and we'll make sure that the job will be done what is the morale of the sir, force sir, right what now, after the, the crash? Men just now? The morale of the force is very. Them, the morale of the force is extremely high. 
Uh, they're proud to be here. They're proud to be doing this job. Uh, and I'm extremely happy with the way that they're performing. Sir, Absolutely marvelous performance, not just by our people, but also both the ITBP, the Army, the NDRF. Sir, but it must be a heartbreaking time. It must be a very heartbreaking and difficult time. Well, any time you lose people, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a good feeling. Uh, but then I think it's for their sake and the fact that we've lost these lives, uh, we have to finish the mission and finish it right. Sir, what have you said to your officers? Well, exactly what I'm telling you now, that they're doing a great job. They just need to hang in there. Uh, this period, of course, will probably last for another 8 to 10 days. And, that, uh, and their uh, performance and their uh, work that they are being doing is actually being recognized the country over. It's not, it's not just the Air Force, but the civilians who have been rescued, the, the common man. Uh, you must have heard the Prime Minister's statement uh, yesterday night, and he's acknowledged that as well. And across the, across the country, there's great tremendous support for the armed forces and for the services, what exactly we're doing in the sector. So the weather keeps getting bad from here on. Have you given yourself some certain time frame with which you're going to evacuate the people, or it's going to continue to get out the last people men? Well, the, uh, as I said, the weather in the mountains changes very rapidly. We are hopeful that from tomorrow, day after onwards, we will start to see a much better uh, improvement in the weather. And as the weather continues to improve, uh, the tempo will also improve, will, will pick up. Is there still because a hope, sorry sir, is there still a hope for survivors in some of the areas like Kedarnath? Well, every time we vacate for Kedarnath, a few days later we find a lot of people collecting there again. But as of this point in time, we are told that there are no more left to be evacuated, except for uh, a few of our NDRF people and the ITP people who were there initially. And that's exactly what this mission was all about yesterday, when he was bringing these people back uh, there. But yes, we have some work done to be done in the Harsil Valley area. We have some work to be done at the Badrinath uh, sector. As a matter of fact, today we have two helicopters who have left this morning for Badrinath uh, from Gaucher itself. Right, right, yes. And uh, they should be returning very shortly with, with, uh, with, with our survivors. Sir, the fear of spread of the epidemic is looming large. Okay. Uh, most of the bodies are decomposing. Do you feel you are being pressured a little bit so that the articles for last cremation could be taken to Kedarnath? Not at all. Not at all. We are working closely with the civil administration. In fact, all the requirements, all the tasking comes from the civil administration. Right. So uh, there's no pressure at all. But the priority the remains the living, I imagine. The priority remains the living. Absolutely. There's no, there's no, there's no change to that. So what about the living operation? How much time will take? Like I said, once we get four days of good weather period, once we get a four days of good weather period, I'm sure we'll be able to wrap up the operation as far as the uh, pulling the survivors out is concerned. The rehabilitation of Uttarakhand will take certainly far more time. You know, when we have to bring in heavy material by our bigger helicopters. So that's a long drawn process. But as far as the survival part is concerned and evacuation of our people is concerned, that I think if we get four days, we should have it done. So we are over the hill now. Well, at Badrinath, our estimate is they're close to about three to 4,000 people. And at, uh, and at Harsil, uh, Harsil, there are about 1,000 people still to, uh, still to be evacuated. And, uh, this